Okay, keyframe editing. Some changes to the way we can edit keyframes. Let's go back to that other file. The first thing is um, if you want to add a new key anywhere along the time timeline, all you need to do is double click and you get a new key. Super simple but a handy little feature. It works for motion graphs too. You double click to add a key on the motion graph. When you're moving keys, you can now move keys past each other, which is something you previously couldn't do. They would sort of bump up into each other and you'd get stuck. But now you can take any group of keys and move them past another key, you know, or uh, past multiple keys. In this case, the path is going to get quite complex, but that's, you know, it's doing the right thing. and. Um, We've removed that restriction of where keys used to bump up into each other. Scaling keys has also gotten a, an improvement. In graph mode, I can scale keys vertically, which was not an option before. So I can now scale this group of selected keys, flatten out the movement, or uh, uh, exaggerate the movement. So I'll flatten it out and the path becomes a little flatter through there drag scale vertically and uh, becomes more extreme. This is previously you could uh, scale horizontally. So what I'm doing now is I click, I hold, so sorry, to move keys normally you just um, click and drag the keys. If I hold down the alt key and I click and drag I'm scaling the keys and now I can in, Graph mode, I can now scale vertically as well as uh, horizontally. We've also added a menu command, um, add keyframe. So at any point in time, I can go to the animation menu, say add keyframe, and what it does is it adds a keyframe for any channel that has animation in it. Um, so this is sort of a way to lock down your object at this point in time. So I know, um, you know, I'm, when's an example, I'm trying to think of an example of when you might use this. If you're uh, setting up sort of uh, stop points, uh, locations where you want to sort of fix the object, that, you know, I'm moving, doing this, sliding around all kinds of animation going in. I want to lock this object the way it is right now. That's when you would go in here, animation, add keyframe, and it'll sort of lock down all the channels at that point in time. And then you can go in and, you know, delete or edit certain channels, but it, you know, at least at that moment you'll lock it in that particular uh, state. Add keyframes. Edit multiple selected keys. Okay. So this was another user request. If I have um, all these keyframes, so the object is, these are all translation keys. The object is moving around various places. And I realize, you know, I really, I wanted my object to be up here instead. So the problem is I would have to move it for each of these keyframes. So I would move it up here and then go to this keyframe and, and move it over here and it's really tedious. The other option is to delete all the keyframes and animate it, re, you know, do the animation over again up here. There's some other workarounds too, but what you can do now is you can select all the keyframes you want to move. So I selected all the keyframes in this channel. I move the object and then all the keyframes move with it. So the relative motion that I that I applied to that first keyframe, that same relative movement gets applied to all the rest of the keyframes that are selected. I'm going to undo that and show you what would happen if I selected, um, you know, every other keyframe. So, you know, just just a few of these here. This is going to be a little um, 
some of the keyframes are going to move, some are going to be left behind. So what's happening is just every keyframe that is selected moves when I edit one of them. And if I don't want that to happen again, I just uh, deselect all the keyframes, and now I'm only working on this one that's at the current time. So the current time, whether it's selected or not, you're editing that keyframe. So this works for layer movement. It also works for point movement. Um, I should let me quickly make a little sample file here. I didn't have one prepared, but let's make um, let's make a circle. Let's split it a little bit, and I'm gonna. some some point movement. Okay, so now the object squishes, squishes both ways, and then goes back to its original shape. Zoom out a little bit. Now let's say I like the animation that I've got going here, but I, I realized I needed to reshape this object. Hmm. If I reshape it, that means I'm going to have to, you know, let's let's actually go ahead and do that. So let's reshape the object. Okay, this is this is the shape I wanted, but now that doesn't apply to all the animation because it was already animated in its old shape. So what I would do instead, let's undo the reshaping. If I want to reshape it and include that reshaping across all the animation, I just go ahead and select all the keys. And now I reshape it. And what's going to happen here? Is the object is going to be reshaped and it's going to include its previous animation. So the relative changes I made on that first frame get applied to all the other frames. So that's a way you can edit multiple keys at once. Both in layer movement and, and point movement.